Hey, I just reviewed four indie comic books from the last couple of weeks. Stick around for my thoughts on them. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Indie Comics Review. I'm Lorenzo, and this is the show where I review comic books every week, indie comics, and I give you my thoughts on them at the end of it. And you can compare my thoughts to your thoughts if you can see that we're kind of on the same wavelength, or you completely disagree with me. Either way, it's fine. So this is the kind of content you may find interesting. Remember to hit that like button and the subscribe button afterwards. All right now, let's get started with reviews. First book up is Eat the Rich, and it is from Boom Studios, and it's written by Sarah Gailey and illustrated by Pius Bach. Uh, so Joey is a girl who's uh, driving home with her boyfriend, Asker, to her boyfriend's home, that is. And they're, they're gonna meet, but well, she's gonna meet Joey's, uh, meet Aster's family for the first time. And if you can't guess by his name, Aster is rich. His family lives in this huge, gorgeous seaside mansion. Joey was already super nervous, but as soon as they reach the welcome sign of the town, Aster has a panic attack as a stop the car. So he's recently stopped drinking, and he's worried that how he will handle his hometown now that he's sober. Having been a drinker since he was 13, he has no idea what that's like. Joy's kind of relieved that she's not the only one that's nervous and that makes her feel a little bit better. When they arrive, Astor's parents appear to be just as shallow and self-absorbed as you might imagine people of his ilk would be. The nanny tries to give Joy a, a heads up on how to act, but she's really not trying to hear it. That night, doing a farewell party for a neighbor's custodian. Joey catches shade for her outfit and she witnesses something completely bizarre. There's a lot of cliches in this book. Uh, some people would say it's lazy writing maybe. Uh, I don't think so, but those cliches are there for a reason. Uh, because many of them, quite frankly, are true. I gotta say, there's one point in this book where the kid is on the beach and he's literally playing with a human jawbone. And neither one of the women in the scene even noticed anything, which is just so on brand for people who just don't pay attention to what's going on around it and their surroundings. It's, just, it's pretty funny. Okay, And also, many rich people are clueless about the rest of the world and you know, they live in a bubble. And many of them are born on third base and think they hit a triple. And then there's a very clear line that is not crossed when it comes to associating with the help. I like that Joey is written from the point of view of a naive outsider. The mean girls at the party give her shit because she doesn't dress like a minus automaton wearing the latest designer fashions and the same goddamn outfit all the time. There's, there's a culture that worships rich and famous people. I am definitely not part of that culture. Uh, if you're down for some well-deserved bashing of the selfish, vapid, and possibly even murderous rich, then uh, check out this five-issue limited series from Boom Studio. I think you might like it. Next book is Gods of Brutality. It is on Black Caravan, which is uh, the, the imprint that uh, Scout has their adult stuff on. And it's written by Rich Woodall and illustrated by Mark Wessler. Or Mark Welser, excuse me. Uh, Nick Dillon is the front man of this heavy metal band called the Murderous Bats. He lives a typical life of a rock and roll star. Booze, drugs, groupies, all that stuff. But one day his 68 Mustang loses the battle with the train and he ends up in hell. Uh, when the story begins, he has returned from the dark abyss and is fronting a new band called the Gods of Brutality. This shows that the story is going to be about Nick's journey through an eventual escape from hell. So after the train accident, Nick found himself chained to a wall along with other damned individuals, waiting to become the lunch of a pack of hungry demons. Desperate, willing to do anything, Nick cries out in prayer to any and all that will hear him for help. Oddly enough, his prayers, his prayers are heard and answered by the gods Zeus and Odin, who are so impressed that anyone would pray to them that they immediately dispatch their bickering sons, Hercules and Thor, to extricate Nick from his hellish situation post-haste. I was really surprised how much I loved this book. They're 
were several laugh out loud moments. And uh, it, it was totally a, a real thing for me. Uh, thanks again to William Survive uh, for sending me this little gym. And uh, uh, it was totally not on my radar. And the writing is, the writing is really good. Um, like I mentioned, it's genuinely funny. Um, being a scout book, it's going to be harder to find uh, issue number one, but uh, issue number two won't be out until I think October because I, I already ordered it on uh, mycomicshop.com and you probably can too through your your, your LCS or uh, mycomicshop.com. Um, I've heard sometimes that the, the local comic shops have a hard time getting scout comics, so you know. Just do what you think is best, but uh, they'll be available probably definitely from both options. Gods of Brutality is a, a fun mix of horror and comedy, and which for me, that's the best kind of horror. Uh, throw in some metal, and you got a perfect mix of just the kind of stuff that uh, is in the same vein of Metalocalypse. Uh, that was a, one of my favorite animated shows from a few years ago, and I definitely approve. Next book is Killer Queen. It's on the Dark Horse label, and it's written by David M. Borg and illustrated by Claudia Balboni, and has a real kick-ass uh, cover by Jen Bartell, a cover C that I picked up. Uh, this is a little space romp starring Alex and Max. They're two gay astronauts and uh, former assassins for hire. And they're gallivanting their way through the galaxy, looking for fun and a way to make money now that they're no longer doing the assassin for hire thing. As the story begins, they're getting some R&R &R at one of the nicest diners in one of the crappiest parts of the galaxy. That comes to an end when the, this monkey with a jetpack confronts Alex because she stole his ship. After defeating the monkey and his outer henchmen, the duo will take off with the monkey's ship. They contact an ex of Alex's and she has a job for them that pays and does not involve killing. The job involves rescuing a diplomat's kid from a race of fascist rhinos on a nearby moon. Sounds easy at first, but the monkey ain't done with him yet, and the rhinos ain't nothing to fuck with. I really like the artwork on this book, especially the, the Adam Strange-like costume that they, they, they put on Alex. Uh, I especially like the cover C, as I mentioned before, that I picked up, and that's the Jim Bartel color. Uh, cover. Um, the colorist, uh, Harry Saxon, also does a great job on this book. Uh, the story so far, uh, it's just okay, I guess. Uh, it's a typical lighthearted space jargon, uh, with lots of sexual innuendo. The production team is all LGBTQ, and, which is great, and it's not all in references, so anyone can really enjoy this book. Uh, would it make my pull list? Uh, honestly, probably not. Uh, not only, I guess, only because I would say it's just my pool is already too crowded. And uh, a lot of my favorite books are more dark and cynical, which says a lot about me, I guess. And But if you're looking for something that's fun and uh, it's an indie space run, then look no further than uh, Killer Queens. Last book of the night is We Don't Kill Spiders. It's also on the Black Caravan imprint, and it is written and illustrated by Joseph Schmalky. This tale takes place in what is what seems like a Nordic medieval kind of a reality. Uh, the leader of a village has summoned a man called Born, uh, who is basically a detective in that realm. He, he's called in because there's been a series of brutal murders wiping out several families, including women and children. The leader, known as Jarl, suspects the culprit to be Revna, the witch. Jarl and the townsfolk had killed Revna's mother and grandmother when she was a child and exiled her to the wilderness, so she definitely has a motive. After enjoying some fine mead and learning the location of the witch, Bjorn sets out to confront her. Uh, after meeting Revna, Bjorn is impressed so much, so much, I should say, that uh, he allows her to conduct a ceremony which is supposed to help Revna find the true murderer. Much of the objection of Jarl who may have something to do with this murder. Again, Black Caravan impresses me. Um, I'm gonna have to start buying more of these scout books on this imprint, on this Black Caravan imprint. It seems to be impressive as anything DC or Vertigo did back in the day. Uh, this title was written and drawn by uh, 
one of the co-publishers, Joseph Smalley. And he clearly knows how to write and draw as well as publishes. Uh, so he's doing triple duty over there. Uh, like Gods of Brutality, uh, the next issue won't be out until October, which gives anyone interested time to order it. I've got um, this and uh, Gods of Brutality on order from uh, my comic shop. So sometimes the LCS is have trouble getting these scout books, like I said before, so you can get them direct from scout or from mycomicshop.com. I recommend that you do so. So yeah, these that Black Caravan is, is, is a real, for, for us indie folks, is, is a real good imprint for us to check out. Now, that's all for the, the books this week. Next week, uh, honestly, there's not a lot of good stuff. I mean, I looked again, I mean, this week was a, a light week as, as it was, but uh, I was able to get some stuff from from uh, subscribers and uh, from mycomicshop.com, so I had plenty of material. So I probably did reach into that uh, treasure trove next week to, to make up the slack. The only thing I see uh, is maybe uh, there's no real number ones. Uh, uh, um, what is it? Uh, vinyl number three is coming out. Uh, there's some other continuing stories coming out. So maybe I'll do a recap of um, of series that have ended recently and, and give my opinion about those if there's no good number ones out there. But I'm pretty sure I'll be able to find some of the vast supply of indie comics that are out there in the uh in, in the in the comic sphere here. Now I want to mention too, uh, a lot of you folks like uh, horror zines. Uh, one of the subscribers, Staple Spine, sent me some stuff, some really uh, awesome zines. Of, and they're out of uh, they operate out of uh, Portland, Oregon is where they're located. And they have these really cool zines that uh, that they sent me. And they are they have like interviews. They have tidbits about horror comics. Uh, they got stickers, they got all kinds of stuff for sale, and I'll leave the link down below uh, to anyone who's interested in uh, checking out these really cool zines from uh, Staple Spine in the, in, the, in the link below. So I definitely give them a, a, a shout out and, and just give a, a look at their at their site and their Staple, Staple Spine on Twitter also. I'll leave their, their Twitter handle. So man, it looks like that's it for this week. Um, I'll be back next week with whatever is available to, to review. I'll be doing the haul tomorrow. And uh, that's all I got. So uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn the notifications on so you can know when I'm making my next video. So until next time, see you guys in the fun papers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up.